Welcome back to the We Larder channel. Today we're going to be making a delicious recipe for potted trout. Now I don't have many fish recipes on my YouTube channel so it's something I hope to do a bit more of in the future but this recipe is so so good and this little jar of potted trout travels really well so it's also perfect for like a picnic if you are having a winter picnic we love winter picnics um <laughs> we don't keep picnics just for the warmer months we love going for walks and things and taking food with us um and it also works really well on toast and um, you could have that on the side of soup like a really like hearty broth and a some toast with some of this potted trout and it would work well um with a salad as well inside um um, baguette or something. It's a really nice lunch uh, type of uh, uh, recipe and it's really light as well so if you're looking for something lighter, if you've been eating a lot of meaty dishes in the winter months then this is a really good recipe for you. It is quite high in butter but it's mostly for um, sealing the jar. Um, so. Now you can actually also use um, smoked salmon for this recipe or plain salmon. I have actually used a smoked salt in this recipe and it works really, really well with the trout. It is so delicious and it's rainbow trout that I have used as well. It is quite high in butter, but that's mostly for sealing the jar. Um, so when you use the butter as a seal to seal the potted trout, it does keep for about a week in the fridge. So keep that in mind. So let's get started on our delicious traditional Scottish potted trout recipe. So for this Scottish potted trout, you're going to need some olive oil for sprinkling into the baking tray, two trout fillets, approximately 260 grams, or you could use salmon or smoked salmon fillets as well. If you are using smoked salmon fillets, please don't use salt in this recipe because it's already quite salty. Um, two slices of lemon, a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, smoked sea salt or ordinary sea salt, some black pepper, 125 grams of butter and parsley for garnishing. So we're just going to start this recipe by drizzling in some of our olive oil into the tray. This is just so it doesn't stick in the tray. So I've just dotted a small amount into a non-stick baking tray. And I'm just going to place the trout fillets into the tray. Or salmon if you are using salmon instead. And this is also a nice recipe to double up as well. So you could double up this recipe and use and make double and um, you could perhaps freeze it, but I wouldn't freeze it in the jars. So I'm actually using this smoked sea salt and it just gives this trout a really nice flavor. Obviously if you're using smoked salmon fillets, you won't need the smoked sea salt, but if you don't have smoked sea salt, you can actually just use ordinary sea salt as well. And I'm just adding in some black pepper and olive oil on the top there as well. Um, and we're gonna pop this into the oven at 160 for 15 to 20 minutes. Just Keep an eye on it until it is completely cooked and we're just going to add our lemons on top there as well. So it should look something like this once it is ready and this is just so so good, it smells delicious um, and you can actually use the lemons to add a little bit more flavour into the potted trout as well so I'm going to keep those. Um, and give them a little squeeze into the potted trout. So to check it's ready, you just need to pop a spoon or a fork in and just make sure that it is cooked right through. But keep a really close eye because you do not want to burn it for this recipe. And that is cooked so, so well. So we're gonna take the lemons off and we're just going to make sure there are no bones going into our potted trout. So when we're flaking it into the bowl, be very careful to check for bones. There shouldn't be bones in these filleted pieces, but just be sure that there aren't any um, by checking when you're flaking it in, because you do not want bones in your potted trout. And I actually did find a couple of very small bones, so it is really worthwhile checking just in case. So we're just gonna flake all of our potted trout into our bowl here. It does take a couple of minutes. Um, Now I've actually taken the lemon slices and I'm just squeezing some of the leftover lemon juice into the potted trout as well. You don't have to do this, but I just find it has a really nice taste. So I'm just giving that a little squeeze to add the juice into the trout. And then we're just gonna start by mashing that all up. So 
So I'm heating all of the butter up in the pan and that's going to melt down completely and I'm just mashing up this trout as well in the background while that's melting away. So we're just breaking it down until it is completely smooth. I don't actually put this into a food processor because I do like a bit of texture in here. Um, so you'd want to make sure you add in your cayenne pepper as well and a little sprinkle of the smoked sea salt again or ordinary sea salt if you're using ordinary sea salt. And you just want to mash this down. So if you add in about a third of the butter and just mash down to as smooth as a texture as you're going to get with a spoon, you still want it quite chunky so you don't want anything completely pureed. And that little bit of butter in there will just help to make this really, really spreadable and delicious. And we're going to pop this into two sterilised jars. So we're basically just spooning it in to the jars. And if you just keep popping that into the jar until it is about, all, about a little bit over two thirds full. I've actually gone a bit over here. So I am just removing some of the trout out of the jar. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to pour our butter over the top of the jar. Please remember to keep a little bit of melted butter for your other jar. So you don't want to pour it all into this jar. So you should have your two jars of potted trout now and then we're just going to pour the melted butter over the top of the jars and this just seals off the potted trout so it does keep in the fridge for about a week. I actually had it a little bit longer than that but I think five to seven days is probably long enough in the fridge and um, I wouldn't want to go over that too much. So the, the butter just helps to seal it off and just makes it look really pretty as well once it's cooled and very traditional. So I'm just using some old jars that I had from the shops and I've just washed them up. I couldn't get that label off the top though. <laughs> um, and that's our jars finished. So we're just going to pop those into the fridge to cool and you can spread them on toasts. You can make sandwiches out of them in baguettes and I, I've actually had them on toast here and they are just so, so delicious. As always, this recipe is available on my website and at angiemilne.com and you can print it out from there as well. And if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to click that like button and subscribe. And if you click the little bell next to it, you'll be notified of my new videos coming out in the future. So I've got lots of delicious Scottish recipes um, coming out this year, traditional Scottish recipes. I've got farmhouse classics. I've got um, grandma's favorite recipes. I've got so many delicious recipes coming out. Um, and I've been making a big list of them all. So take care and I hope to see you all again soon. Lots of love. Bye bye.